Hello and welcome in this video about chapter 10. Chapter 10 coordination in the supply chain. Um, in this video series consists out of three videos. In the first video we are crossing the first learning objective and that is described supply chain coordination and the bull whip effect and their effect on supply chain performance. In the next video we will cross the second learning objective, identify obstacles to coordination in a supply chain. In the last video we will uh, cross the uh, last two learning objectives, discuss managerial levers that help achieve coordination in the supply chain and understand the different forms of collaborative planning, forecasting and replenishment possible in a supply chain. But in this video we will cross only the first learning objective. Um, the uh, supply chain coordination is of importance to a supply chain manager as we want to establish the, we want to uh, maximize the total profitability of the whole supply chain. The whole supply chain is at stake here. And we like to align all the, uh, all the actions and all the goals within all separate stages within the supply chain itself. Please recall, you got the, uh, the supplier, the manufacturer, the distributor, the retailer and the consumer. Those five stages are the stages in the supply chain. And, uh, you, um, uh, and if you want to maximize your supply chain uh, profitability, you want to share information. You want to share information from uh, all, si all different stages as the supply chain more or less becomes one within the coordination of actions and the coordination of uh, information. And if there is lack of uh, coordination, this will uh, result in the objectives of different uh, stages that are conflicting and that information between the stages are delayed or distorted. So we're talking about information and on the one hand and on actions on the other hand. You got um, a very nice example of this is the bull whip effect. With the uh, bull whip effect, it is um, it is possible that the variability from one stage to the other stage uh, increases when you go back through the supply chain itself. For example, you got. The, uh, the retailer itself and the retailer has a uh, relatively stable demand. The retailer uh, purchases his, uh, his goods with the uh, distributor, in this case the wholesaler. He uh, places his, um, uh, his orders for example once or twice a week. He gets a delivery once or twice a week, so he gets um, the goods also for the whole period, so for one week or for half a week. This tends to increase the variability with the uh, distributor, as you see here. The distributor purchases his, uh, his goods at the manufacturer manufacturer uh, delivers his goods um, every month for example and then every month he delivers the goods for the whole month as you see here so what what happens the variability increases through the supply chain when we add the supplier itself then the variability tends to increase more further. 
Um, this is called the bull whip effect, and the effect increases when you go further back into the supply chain itself. Uh, this will have a dramatic effect on performance. And you got uh, different uh, performance indicators. In this case, we got seven performance indicators. The final performance indicator is profit. Uh, you can divide profit into uh, um, uh, different performance, uh, uh, performance measures. Those are manufacturing cost, inventory cost, replenishment lead time, per, uh, transportation cost, labor cost for shipping and receiving, product availability, and the last one is profitability. And as the coordination of uh, uh, within the supply chain itself increases, the uh, manufacturing cost will decrease. Or, the other way around, if coordination in information and in actions are not optimal, the manufacturing cost will increase. As you, as, an, um, as the manufacturer, do not know what, uh, uh, what goods are needed in, in, your, um, in your supply chain, in the distributor and with the retailer, and you produce in batches, um, you will not know what uh, point of sale, what POS information is available. So you cannot incorporate that information into your production plan. If that is the case, that will increase and inevitably increase your production cost. It will also increase your inventory cost. As we all know, um, and we covered in earlier chapters, inventory cost is a very important cost in um, in the supply chain itself. Inventory cost and availability are um, uh, two sides of the same. When, uh, when inventory uh, increases, the availability increases, but also the inventory cost will increase. And as the inventory cost increases, the um, uh, the total product availability, the total product availability, will uh, increase, but also the um, the uh, the profit in the supply chain itself will decrease. And you, as a supply chain manager, would like to increase to maximize the profitability in the whole supply chain. So what you want to achieve is maximum coordination in your supply chain through information and through actions. That's what you would like to achieve and if you do so, you do so through uh, increasing or uh, decreasing these, um, uh, these uh, indicators. In the next uh, video, we will uh, now we have established why it is important to have a coordination within your supply chain. In the next video, we are crossing what obstacles you will encounter, you might encounter um, when we are um, when we are talking about uh, a supply chain uh, uh, coordination. And the last one will be about the levers you as a manager have to increase the coordination. So that will be it for um, video 2 and for video 3.